So, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, we just slowly start here. So, first of all, hello everyone. Um, I'm happy that you made it all to our second, already second uh, travel inspiration webinar. Uh, the idea behind those webinars is that many people are already planning where to go next after Corona. Uh, so we want to support you on that decision by presenting a new destination every second week. And last time we did Morocco. And this time we want to make you more familiar with Iceland. So I'm Robin from Join My Trip and I'm your host tonight. Since I have not been to Iceland yet, unfortunately, um, I'm glad to have support here from another team member tonight. Hello, Marielle. Hi, thank you, Robin, for that introduction. I'm Mary Ellen, also from Join My Trip, and I've been to Iceland a handful of times, so five times, and I'm happy to give you guys more insights. Yeah, thanks for supporting me tonight, Marian. And I also have Tim here tonight. He's the creator of the trip that we will present. Thanks for being here, Tim, again. And so both have actually a lot of knowledge and experience with Iceland. So we'll uh, also have the opportunity to ask a questions uh, to them in the end of the webinar here. So probably they are not the only ones uh, tonight who have been to Iceland. So let's do a quick poll and see how many people who are uh, here with us tonight. It's uh, 65 people actually uh, have been to Iceland yet. So Juliana, if you can start a poll and ask the people, have they been to Iceland yet? So Maren, how's the poll going? Waiting for results to come in. Oh, come in. Most, mostly no. We're at 90, no. 93% no, so that's perfect. We can teach okay. you guys something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's perfect. So uh, I hope for those who have not, have not been, uh, I hope we can make you more curious about it. And if you have been, maybe you see some things you don't know before. Um, but. Before we start, actually, um, I want to make you aware of some, yeah, let's not call them rules, but I would be happy if you follow it. Uh, so first of all, please stay muted during the webinar. Uh, so we don't have any other noises in the background while we uh, present. And you will find the button for being muted like in the left corner. I think uh, most of you are muted anyways uh, already, I just saw. Uh, another point is we have a chat here. Uh, please use it respectfully. Of course, you can always uh, ask questions as during the webinar. And also, if you want to share your feelings during the webinar, you can use the reactions. Uh, you will find them by clicking the button in the middle of your screen. Uh, feel free to try it now. So, but uh, most of you already saw that uh, logo of Join My Trip in the beginning of the webinar. Uh, so maybe you don't know our company and what we do actually. Uh, so yeah, Marianne, can you give us a short insight what Join My Trip is actually about? Certainly. So very briefly explained, Join My Trip brings together a community of about 140,000 members. So there's trip leaders and then also trip mates. So trip leaders are travelers who love to plan, organize, and lead trips. And then there's the trip mates who would rather sit back and relax while enjoying traveling in a group of like-minded travelers. So just quickly summarize, like I mentioned, um, we have over 140,000 members and we empower everyone to experience the world with their own eyes. And here you can get a little bit of an impression of how it's looked like in the past. And hopefully after COVID is over, um, we can connect more travelers like you guys. And if you look at, have a look at the bottom left there, you might recognize Tim there smiling in the picture. <laughs> so thanks for the insight, Maria. Um, so what we're doing here tonight, uh, of course, is Iceland. So in Iceland, basically, the nature here is endless. And it's a perfect place, basically, for wanderers and also adventurers. And here we collected some top activities, what you can actually do and see when you're in Iceland. So, of course, when it comes to nature, hiking is, of course, a perfect activity. And you can do it in a lot of places in Iceland. Uh, what you also should not miss are the ice caves and what you all actually are familiar with, I think, are the Northern Lights. Uh, we will give you more information later about how to see them best. Um, if you want to do a more, uh, more uh, activity sports, it's kayaking and rafting. You can do it uh, on the many rivers, where you, which you have on Iceland. And also what you can do is diving. There is actually a really cool place where you can dive. It's the Silver Fisher. It's basically a crack, 
cracked formed by the tectonic plates uh, of Europe and North America. And uh, the person you can see diving here is actually the, uh, Tim, our trip leader tonight. And also what we can do in Iceland, of course, a lot of snow, uh, we can do snow mobiling. So uh, next to the amazing landscape of Iceland, uh, I think for a lot of people also important is uh, food. So we have like a short collection of uh, food here for you. Uh, Marianne, uh, can you tell me what do you know from this list where you have been to Iceland or what do you know in general and tried? Yeah, so I've tried the fish there in Iceland. Um, some local or fish native to Iceland are monkfish and haddock, so you can um, taste those there. And you can also eat this fermented shark. I've never done it myself, but um, it's the national dish in Iceland. It might sound a little bit disgusting, but um, it's certainly a cultural experience to be had there. And Cafe Loki actually in Reykjavik serves some of the cheapest kinds. So as we know, um, Iceland's kind of a, or as we will know, Iceland's kind of an expensive country to travel to. So you can go there to have that, have that experience. And then I, I've also had skur, which is um, an Icelandic dairy product. You might be familiar with it. And it's kind of like a Greekish yogurt. And then also the Icelandic hot dog. And what makes it special is that it's mostly from Icelandic plants. And Robin, maybe you want to tell us about the other two there. Yeah, uh, so for, uh, we have also rock brought here on the list. Uh, it's lava bread also called. I added here because it's like, uh, it's, it's a spread that is buried basically in the ground near of the hot springs and gets baked there. So this is why I added, I think it's pretty cool. And it also, uh, I think tastes really good. I haven't tried it myself yet. And there is also cured super. Um, it's a traditional Icelandic lamb soup, basically. So um, next we talk some things you have to consider when organizing your trip. So when it comes to accommodation, uh, you have the opportunity to stay at a nice Airbnbs, for example, in houses uh, you already know maybe from pictures, the nice Icelandic houses. And uh, you can also go camping. So in general, the people in Iceland are really welcoming and happy to help if you ask nicely. So uh, for example, if you camp, you can fill up your water basically everywhere. Uh, but it's for cooking or drinking, you should prefer the cold water, it was told uh, from Tim, uh, because the warm water can have like a taste or smell of rotten eggs because it comes from directly from the thermal springs. So what you can also do uh, is actually go for a camper when. So wild camping is uh, kind of a controversial topic in Iceland. But for example, you can always ask uh, at gas stations um, if you could stay there overnight. That's usually that is no problem. And also remember to take some equipment with you uh, to remove the snow underneath uh, your car to prevent some damage. Uh, Tim, you had experience with this, right? Uh, yes, uh, now it's a funny story, but when we were in Iceland, since uh, not all uh, camping sites are serviced during the winter, normally there or sometimes there's a lot of snow on the, them. And when you park there, all the snow gets blown um, into the undercarriage of your car. And it freezes during the night also. So we actually lost um, our undercarriage because the ice got so heavy. And there was about 500 euros to pay um, for the repairment at the shop. And um, also, our heater didn't work one night, so sleeping with minus 12 degrees, um, you can imagine that that is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's like in the, in the end you said like it's a funny story, but when you're inexperienced there, it's like not really funny, right? So uh, yeah, we just mentioned it here, keep that in mind if you go for a car. So uh, basically, like I said, you can always go like for a camper van or also simply a rental car. And what you also have on Iceland are uh, the tour buses. Uh, which take you to, to specific places like uh, in Iceland. And talking about the rental car, uh, Marianne also have experience with this. Would you shortly explain uh, if there were any restrictions like or problems when you want to rent a car in Iceland? Yeah, for sure. So I would say Iceland's one of the easiest countries, especially for younger drivers to rent a car. So renting a car there is relatively easy as long as you have your credit card and your driver's license, of course. Um, and most rental companies will also ask for your age when you're making the booking online, so you'll be aware of the price price beforehand. But um, do take full coverage of your insurance because, as Tim was saying, even though his accident wasn't covered by insurance, accidents like that can happen. And the weather in Iceland is very unpredictable, so 
you need to be need to be aware of that. But I would say overall that roads in Iceland are very easy to drive um, and straightforward. So even if you're a relatively unexperienced driver, the only thing you have to really worry about is the weather. But as long as the weather is fine, you're good. Yeah, um, something else I think you should be aware of are um, the road conditions in the winter time. They have an amazing winter service on the roads, but not all roads are paved. And sometimes when a lot of snow is there, um, they have to close down some roads for a bit longer than you would expect. So you should also plan that you maybe get stuck for one or two days in a city where you won't get out because the roads are closed. So you shouldn't overestimate your own driving skills since it can get dangerous quite fast. And you should websites such as road.is or safetravel.is to check the road conditions, but that shouldn't stop you from making a trip to Iceland. Okay, yeah, thanks for the insights. Uh, I think this is pretty helpful. And uh, also, if you're searching for good offers when renting a car in Iceland uh, or a camper van, you can always check our partnerships. For example, partnerships we have, for example, we have uh, Campstar and we have also Billiger Mietwagen. Uh, we have partnerships with them, so we can get quite good offers uh, if you search for that. So, um, of course, we have some more general tips uh, for you. So, in general, the best month uh, to travel to Iceland is May to August because you have like a really mild weather there. Uh, but of course, if you go off season, basically the rental car and accommodation and so on is cheaper. I mean, it's like like everywhere, right? So. Uh, for restaurants, there is actually no tip necessary, unlike in most of uh, European countries. And in general, you should keep in mind that Iceland, like Marielle also mentioned, is uh, quite an expensive country. Um, also, what you should keep in mind that you should pack appropriately. Uh, that means that you should be prepared for uh, all kind of weather. And like, like also, yeah, like not getting cold, take one close with you. And um, regarding like the, the road conditions, you can also check out safetravel.is or road.is. Uh, Tim already mentioned them. Um, you can check there like uh, how the weather is at specific points of the island and it gets really uh, fast updated. So they're really important sites to check if you go to Iceland. And of course, you should also go uh, for a really good car. And this is like, Actually, a last point that is for you, Marion, right? Yeah, so definitely keep or check the road conditions beforehand if you can. And I actually had a personal experience that's also, it wasn't a funny story at the time, but it's a funny story now. Um, we went off-roading and the road was supposed to be closed and we ended up getting stuck in the middle of a snow desert and there was literally nobody there and no cell service there. And we were like, what do we do? And not to scare you at all, but always keep um, some extra warm clothes in your car in case something like that does happen. Um, of course, the risks are relatively small, but um, just to keep that in mind. So basically, uh, what you also uh, mentioned already are the Northern Lights. Um, what you can generally say about the Northern Lights here is that the best time period uh, to see them is actually from August to mid-April and the Northern Lights peak at September and March. So the best conditions to see them is, uh, yeah, more or less obviously, uh, darkness, a uh, clear sky, uh, no light pollution, and also new moon. So, and there are also many apps actually who can help you to, uh, to spot those Northern Lights. So Tim, do you have anything to add what I said? Yeah, in general, you should not be uh, disappointed if you can't see the aurora because sometimes when it's cloudy and the aurora is not really strong, you might not uh, recognize it or just recognize it as a kind of bright gray cloud. And in that case, you can take a look through your camera because the sensor can help you to display the green color of it and you can recognize it then. And when you try to see them, you should be patient and prepare for a longer wait time. But in general, the chances are pretty good that you see them. Yeah, thanks, Tim. I, I hope that also helps like to, to spot them when you're in Iceland. So, Marianne, what is next? Yeah, so next we want to introduce you to a trip that was made with Join My Trip with Tim. And um, he planned it and traveled to Iceland with two trip mates. And Tim's already been a 
trip leader for some other destinations as well. So we want to present to you this trip as an inspiration of what's possible to do in two weeks, uh, two weeks spent in Iceland and give you some ideas of what you can see and where you can visit. So, but uh, first of all, we uh, want to kind of a uh, short geographical orientation that you know where we actually are. Um, I think most of you all know where Iceland is basically. Um, it's located between Europe and, and Greenland. It is part of Europe and is also a member of the Schengen area. On the map, sorry, on the map here, you can see the itinerary of Tim, which is basically a road trip around the whole island, including 29 stops, which he planned. Uh, of course, we cannot cover here all the stops. So we just took 10, which we thought uh, could be interesting to you. Um, after the webinar, you will also receive a feedback form. And after submitting it, uh, you will receive the presentation. And inside the presentation, uh, there is the whole trip of Tim linked anyway. So you can always look it up then. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, if you travel to Iceland, you will most likely also end up in Reykjavik. And you are able to find some cheaper hostels and hotels around the city center there. Um, Reykjavik Rick is a really diverse city and there are many things you can do around there. Um, I would suggest you to do a free walking tour where you get to walk around the city for about two hours with someone local who knows a lot about the, um, uh, the city itself and some funny facts about Reykjavik and Iceland in general. And at the end, you can basically give a tip um, what you think um, the tour was worth to you. In the evenings, you can go out in pubs on Lavengur, the main shopping street, find a place where you can do karaoke or just go for a nice dinner. In my opinion, another must do is the Planetarium Perlan. And um, there you can go into an artificial ice cave where, for example, um, the last piece of the OK Glacier is preserved. OK Glacier is actually the first glacier in Iceland that's lost its status as such. And something else you can do there is watch an Aurora Panorama show where you get told stories about the Northern Lights and you are guaranteed to see them. If you are on a budget, especially the ice cave can save you some money compared to visiting a real one. So uh, how many days uh, would you recommend like to get the full Reykjavik experience? Well, I think about two days would do it for Reykjavik itself, but if you want to stay there for your um, departure and um, make a lot of day trips from there, you can stay there even longer because a lot of places are um, just within a day range. So you can do it from there, basically. Ah, thanks, Tim. So, uh, Marianne, where do we go next after Reykjavik? Yeah, so next we head down south to Seljalandsfoss, and you will not be able to miss this waterfall because you can see it directly from the road and it's massive. And the coolest thing about this waterfall, actually, as you can see in the picture, is that you can hike behind it. Um, just make sure that you have your waterproof gear on. So again, making sure that you have the right equipment. And just keeping in mind that it is very touristy. Um, so going off season is obviously better if you want less people. And then actually in the summertime, we ended up going there in the middle of the night because the daylight in Iceland lasts for so long and there is hardly anyone there. So that was a pretty magical experience. And if you hike left from Seljalandsfoss, there's actually another lesser known waterfall called Glufrabui. And um, that, in my opinion, is almost nicer than Seljalandsfoss. It's this waterfall that's hidden in a cave. Um, so make sure to pay a visit there as well. And then we head to the next one, to Skugafoss. Um, so if you've thought after Seljalandsfoss that you've seen a big waterfall, this one's absolutely massive. Um, and again, quite touristy because the tour buses can easily access this waterfall. But there's some nice lunch spots close to there. So it's a perfect spot to just stop for lunch and then you can hike around the Selenian Post as well. Tim, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I can only agree with Marielle and Skogafas. It's an amazing landmark you must visit. You can climb a staircase to the top of the waterfall or take a walk really close to the bottom of it. We actually stayed there overnight um, on the camping site right in front of it and even got a glimpse at the aurora um, on the horizon, including a beautiful starry night. And uh, Skogafoss is also a great starting point in the morning. If you want to watch the sunrise at Solheimersund plane wreck, like you can see here in the picture. And um, 
It's about a 30 to 40 minute walk, walk from the parking lot there. Um, or you can take a um, bus shuttle that takes you there. But walking saves you about 20 euros and it's not a hard walk. During the winter months, you should um, take a look at the weather forecast because in the winter months, the weather can change really fast and it can get a bit dangerous. Yeah, I agree. Hiking to that plane wreck, it can get pretty windy because it's a very open area. But then we head to Dirole, and I really love this spot because it overlooks the many, many kilometers of black sand beaches. So it's absolutely beautiful. And there is a cool lighthouse there as well. And another thing I like about this spot is that it's kind of up on a hill, so the tour buses can't get up there. I don't know if they've made some changes to the roads there since it's been over a year since I was last in Iceland, but at least the last time I was there, um, the tour buses can't really make it up there. So it's so it's much much quieter than some of the other touristy spots. And you can also spot some puffins there. You can see a little puffin in the picture. <laughs> and then we go to Reynistiara. Of course, you have to experience the black sand beaches. Um, but be careful about going close to the wa waves because they get really massive and it can get kind of dangerous also. But the rock structures there, the basal um, rock structures there are just simply amazing, as you can see there in the picture. So since <clears throat> neither Marianne or Tim have visited actually this place, uh, I just jump in you. Um, do not force me like to to spell out the name of this place. I've read that even Icelandic people have like uh, a hard time to spell out the name um, of this canyon. So this is, yeah, like I said, a canyon. It, is for, it was formed by glacier water like a very long, long time ago. And this place was not really famous some years ago, um, but Justin Bieber actually shot a music video there like in 2015. And after this music video came out, tourism was actually exploding at this place. So uh, the canyon is not always open for visitors, uh, but you can check it online as already shown on the website safetravel.is uh, if it's open or closed. Uh, it's of course always uh, due to the weather conditions still. Yeah, and driving on the ring road, you, might, you won't miss the next landmark we have here because it's right next to the road. Um, from the glacier, pieces of ice travel through a small outlet into the sea and the ocean current brings some of them back to the shore to the so-called diamond beach. The beach got its name because of the ice pieces and they look like diamonds, which looks especially impressive during the sunrise or sunset. It's really touristy, um, but it's definitely worth a visit. And maybe also during the morning or evening hours, there are not that many people. So it's probably worth going there um, during those hours. The next stop we choose is uh, Krotia Taja. It's a cave located close to Lake Mivatten. And on top, you can see the tectonic plates um, from Eurasia and America meet there. Inside of the cave, you can find a hot spring, uh, but a sign at the entrance tells you that you are not allowed to go for a swim there since the water temperature rose to about 45 um, degrees Celsius. But it's kind of a gray area. And if you want to, you can go for a swim um, at your own risk. So the travel mates I had with me, they actually went uh, in for a swim and really enjoyed it. For me, it was too hot. I rather stayed in the cold outside. And walking down the cave, you must be aware of the slippery surface uh, because of, uh, in the winter times, the water vapor um, kind of freezes there. So it gets really slippery. And in the parking lot, um, it's just a gravel road. So basically in the winter months, you get stuck really easily because there's also no winter service. And another um, uh, cave entrance is located close to that one, but it is close to the public. If you get lucky, you might be able to find a local that goes for a swim there and you get a small look inside of it. And then we head to the other side of the island to the West Fjords and you could easily spend um, a week in the West Fjords, but even, even if you do have the one day to spend there, definitely use that up. And it's a pretty remote area, so if you really want to enjoy the rugged beauty of Iceland, um, the West Fjords are a place to go. And then we go to Snæfellsnes, which is by far my favorite part of Iceland, and I might be a little bit biased because three, of, three out of the five times that I've been there, I've stayed here. 
And I would say um, from personal experience that this is one of the best spots to see the Northern Lights because it's kind of secluded and shielded by the mountains. So the cloud cover doesn't get to be as much and the weather in general there is better. Actually, we went there in November and we ended up seeing the Northern Lights every single night of our four day, four day trip. So it was pretty amazing. And you can also visit the land Brotalaug Hot Springs there for free and the famous Kirkjufell Mountain, Helnar and Arnar Sapi, and then the famous Black Church of Budja Kirkja. Um, and also, of course, you can say hi to the, the um, animals there, the Icelandic horses and the sheep. And how about your experience in Snipe business, Tim? Yeah, Snapfulness is also often referred to as Iceland in miniature because of the breathtaking and diverse landscape, like you said, Marielle. Um, probably most famous and shown in many movies and postcards um, is the peninsula for the mountain Kirkjufell. And another other popular destination for hiking is uh, the Snuffle Jökuls National Park with its glacier. But if you want to go there and navigate your way with, for example, Google Maps, you should be aware that it can be kind of misleading. We got sent on a completely wrong um, track on a small gravel road and got stuck there. And let me tell you, walking through a mild snowstorm for 30 minutes is not a lot of fun. Luckily, the people in Iceland are very friendly. So a farmer um, helped us to recover our stuck camper van. Yeah, thanks for the insights, you two, uh, of this place. And unfortunately, this is already uh, the, the last stop uh, we presented here, like I said. Um, we only took uh, 10 stops. The whole journey has like 29 jobs, jobs uh, as stops, sorry, and take about uh, two weeks uh, to complete. Um, of course, this journey, what we presented it here, just is kind of, yeah, an inspiration. So you can go also like the other way around, for, uh, for example, or you can leave some stops out. Um, but I think it's a good starting point uh, if you plan on trip for Iceland. Uh, that you have like kind of a short overview what you can see there and pick some interesting sp uh, spots for you. So actually what is coming next? Uh, if you already think of where you want to travel after you went to Iceland, uh, we would recommend you to adjust yourself for the Cuba webinar. And this is also the first uh, country in the webinar series I've been actually uh, been to myself. Uh, it will take place on Wednesday in two weeks at the same time. So uh, Cuba was actually chosen from our audience last time when we did the Morocco webinar. Um, again, we have now five countries for you. And my colleague Giuliano will now start a poll for 30 seconds, which country we will present in the uh, next, so in the webinar after Cuba, basically. So this is four weeks from now on. So Juliana, if you want to start the poll and then we can see where we are going to the travel inspiration. Answer is coming in. Finland's yeah. up there. 45% for Finland. Okay, Finland. Looks, oh, looks like it's Finland. Okay, good for you, Marianne. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got to talk about my home country. <laughs> so, do you have kind of an end result, more or less? What do you think? End result is Finland. Yeah, we take Finland. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, then it's Finland. Great, I'm looking forward to it. And Marielle, you can join us too then again and <laughs> yes. tell us some secrets about your home country. And the webinar will take place four weeks from now on. It will be also on Wednesday on the same time. So, of course, that was not it. We have other webinars for you. Um, if you're motivated, like to plan your next trip and explore the world uh, with a group of soon to be friends, then you are invited to our trip leader webinar. Uh, we will show you there how you can perfectly set up a trip at our platform, Join My Trip, and also the best way to promote it that you can have many people on your trip and go on adventures together. So this webinar takes in general place once a month in English, and the next one will be on 7th of April. It's also on a Wednesday on the same time. We keep it simple. And we have another webinar for next week planned. This is the How to Travel Safely webinar. Uh, because of Corona, I think many people are like unsure how is it with Corona and traveling. So we thought we just give you kind of uh, many tips and trips. 
how to do that and some advices where you can get information. Um, so this is also on a Wednesday at the same time. You see, we keep it really simple here with our webinars. We have basically almost every week a webinar on a Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. So uh, the registration link for each webinar can be found in the Zoom chat uh, in some say, or it is already there. Um, you can also find the link to the feedback form I already mentioned. And we will be, of course, happy about having some opinions uh, from our webinars. And after, like I already said, after participating and send it to us back, you get the slides. So you have all the information. And inside the slides, there is also linked the full trip of Tim. If there is no question anymore, I have to thank you all for your participation tonight. And also, of course, thank you to my co-host, Marianne, and of course, our trip here, Tim, who, um, whose trip it was. And in case you have any questions or thoughts to share with me about Iceland, the webinar, or JAMA trip in general, like expanding again what we do, uh, you can always contact me for more information here. So uh, yeah, thank you again, and see you next time. Uh, to the Cuba webinar, therefore, or to our other webinars we offer. Uh, like I said, we have all the links uh, in the chat. Maybe you have to search them a little again. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Thank uh, Marianne and Tim. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.